everyone welcome to my youtube channel my name is ify alexis lee and thank you so much for clicking on this video so today i'm going to be sharing something that has been so heavy on my heart in the last i don't know maybe 24 hours less than 24 hours i think um and basically it's about one of my favorite authors preachers joshua harris um who recently has just come out to say that he is no longer a Christian as he would have defined it prior. Also recanting, um, just really kind of going back on one of the books that he wrote, I Kissed Dating Goodbye, um, as well as also sharing that he's now divorced or separated, I think it was divorced. Um, and he's just come out to share some of these things. And I saw all of it last night and really my heart was so heavy, so, so, so heavy. And there was a myriad of things I had to process in that time and yeah i just wanted to really share i wanted to share because since that time a few of my friends have shared the link with me have posted you know and asked me what i think about it and i thought it'd be good if i just give a general reply and a general sense of what my thoughts are so this morning i also watched his documentary i survived i could stay in goodbye i watched the first half of it um i haven't watched the rest but yeah my heart is just incredibly heavy um so Joshua Harris is someone that I have loved. I read his books, just to give some context, I'm 27. Um, I know that the book came out in the mid 90s, I believe it was. Um, and it came out during the purity movement. It came out at a time where the messages in most churches, evangelical churches was about saving yourself until marriage, no sex and all of that stuff. But I didn't actually read the book then. In the early 90s, in the mid 90s, I was a baby. I was a child. I was an infant. I was born in 1992. So I really did miss a lot of that purity movement. However, I read the book when I was 18 um, and that would have been in 2010. I read it in my first year of university. Just to give some context to it, I had gotten saved when I was 15. Um, and started walking with God quite passionately since then and there was a lot that the Holy Spirit laid on my heart as to what purity meant so for me I'm someone that speaks a lot and preaches a lot about holiness singleness honor um, I'm now married I got married in January last year and honor purity holiness are still the messages that I preach and I, I, I speak so passionately about so when I was about 15 till let's say 18 the Holy Spirit just was really laying a foundation in my heart about purity in those times and in those years without even a word understanding who Joshua Harris was or some of the major preachers of purity now. I just knew for myself that there were certain things that I wanted to do to keep myself pure. That was not swearing. That was um, deciding and saying that, you know, I want my first boyfriend to really be my husband and not wanting to date casually for the sake of dating, not wanting to give my heart away. These are some of the terms that I, I just knew through inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Um, one of my first kiss to be on my wedding day, not wanting to, wanting to be a virgin on my wedding day. These are certain things that the Holy Spirit was just laying on my heart. And I thank God for the group of friends that I had in college in secondary school at the time and we all echoed the same sentiments um, even though the message wasn't one that we heard so readily spoken about and preached about in churches so fast forward i already had this mindset i already had this mentality all the way to 2010 starting university where i found out about this author and i picked up the book and i started reading it and it was the most refreshing experience i had ever had to have someone echo the same sentiments that I had. Um, there's even just a, a quote on the back of the book by Elizabeth Elliot. She says, bravissimo. Um, I applaud Josh's forthrightness, courage, God-given conviction and ability to articulate a message that is so desperately needed. And I completely, with my whole heart, stand by what she had said. Um, this morning I was looking through this book. I also had the follow-up, Boy Meets Girl, Say Hello to Courtship. I was looking through this book whilst watching the documentary and I was looking at the aspects of it that I had highlighted, um, that I had kind of like placed and just thought, wow, God, this is an author at the time who really echoed the voice of the Lord and had a strong prophetic voice that really did speak to the nations, millions. I think it, um, the book, I remember it was over a million copies sold. Um, and for me, I wasn't a part of the purity movement, but a few things I, there's a few things I learned this morning. So because the book came out at a time where people were highly polarized by the purity movement, and unfortunately, um, the purity movement came at such a place to, I guess, 
offset um you know the pendulum how pendulums work so the purity movement came at a time where they wanted to offset a lot of the work that had been done by perhaps the sexual revolution um the the rise in abortion as well that was legalized in the states um so we had this purity movement that came as a way to um balance the scales and unfortunately was very very polarized in and of itself as in the the documentary i survived i can stay in goodbye you're hearing some of the messages and I'm listening to these people that are talking about I'm going to wait until I'm married to have sex. And one thing that stood out to me that was glaringly obvious was that these people were more committed to purity than they were to Christ Jesus. And by purity, what a lot of them termed as purity was I'm going to keep my V card. I'm going to keep my virginity until I get married. And when I get married, God is going to give me an awesome spouse and we're going to have mind blowing sex. And that was really the destination for a lot of people. So one of the first things that I bring to you guys um, in watching this is that we have to love God so much more than we love any fad, so much more than we want anything. Purity is not about, it's not simply about the abstinence of evil. It's about pursuit of God. And I think that a lot of people that perhaps are filled with regret over this book, they didn't get the balance right. That it's not just about, I'm not going to have sex, I'm going to have mind-blowing sex when I'm married. But it's really about what does God want? What's God's view on this? And that was something that was ingrained in my own heart. So when the time came to read this book, there was a lot more balance that I had. I wasn't reading this as a way of, if I read this and do everything that he says, that God is going to grant me a spouse and we're going to live happily ever after. In reading this book, it helped form some of the foundations that I adhere to and teach others. I'll give you a few um, snippets and stuff that I've learned from this book. If you follow my teachings at all, you know that I, I consistently reference Joshua Harris. So one of the key ones is the joy of intimacy is the reward of commitment. And it's just understanding that intimacy is given for each level of commitment, that you should not overcommit or give more intimacy than the commitment level requires. That's one that I love. Something else that he mentions is that a vague definition for righteousness leads to compromise. Guys, I know these quotes off the top of my head. This is how much this author has shaped my thinking. Um, or oh God through this author has shaped my thinking. The reward of um, a vague definition of righteousness leads to compromise. And that really showed me that if you have to define righteousness rightly, because if you have a vague definition of it, compromise is inevitable. And that's just seen in entropy. The, you know, the law of entropy teaches that everything naturally moves towards a state of disorder. So there's so many different things. And one thing I really loved about this book was how it kept pointing us to the cross of Jesus. Um, yes, the standard was high. Yes, he was someone that was like, holiness is the only way forward. Yes, he's, he, you know, in writing to this book, he set the standard at a place where if you were someone that was just wanting to be carnal and fleshly, you would feel so convicted. And this is something that just resonated with me. And it's something that still resonates with me as a married woman. And I thank God for God, the inspiration of the Holy Spirit through Joshua Harris, Harris to write these kinds of books. For me, I think that we have to be so careful with not being polarized by the messages of media and modern day society. These are books that I read and took the meat and left the bones. Um, and there was something that I was able to decipher, okay, what works for me and what doesn't work for me? By the grace of God, my husband and I, we abstained um, in our courtship. I abstained from sex full stop until I got married. I got married as a virgin. We had our first kiss on the altar. But I realized that these things are not stamps that I wear on my chest. These are things that were done in honor to God and as a way to glorify God, point blank, period. Something else that I became so aware of this morning and last night was just that nobody is fallible. Um, nobody's infallible, we are all fallible. The only person that deserves, oh gosh, deserves our worship is God. No man deserves our worship, nobody does. Because just seeing the, you know, him denouncing certain things of the faith and the falling away that's happening, it really does break my heart because the people that he, um, in the documentary and the producers were putting forward that were saying that this book shattered them were people that perhaps don't, don't even stick or adhere to the Christian faith today and I felt as though a lot of weight was placed on him a lot of responsibility was placed on him that he didn't deserve um, I think you know I know he wrote the book when he was 21 and his message resonates with me being someone who had been I'm still a young preacher um, but really kind of took 
took to ministry in my early 20s, late teens actually, and took to serving God and wanting to make him known. And so it, it definitely was such a shock to me. I cried, <laughs> my husband will tell you, um, just reading some of the posts and reading some of the comments. And I felt a strong sense of Oh, a strong, a strong conviction to take heed lest I fall. Um, in just watching the documentary and seeing how someone who started off so zealous and so on fire and so passionate about the things of God, and I've also listened to his sermons, just to say after he wrote this book when he was 21, he then went on to pastor a church for 17 years um, before, you know, stepping down and going off to study. I just became so acutely aware of the need to remain planted and to stand there for. It's not even about Joshua Harris. It's about so many different Christians that I know, people that profess the faith at certain points who no longer profess the faith. And it is incredibly disheartening. And then I have to remind myself of the word of God that says that the love of many will actually wax cold um, and the elect will be deceived. And I have to start thinking in my own heart, if you take heed lest you fall, to make sure I stand there for. Um, and it's tough. Joshua Harris was a huge prophetic voice in the 90s and early 2000s. I would say a huge prophetic voice that brought alignment to a lot of the rubbish that was going on within churches and within society. And I look at prophetic voices in today. I think my, I consider myself to be one of them. And it's a real challenge to myself to make sure I'm standing upright. And the same way I bring this challenge to you as well, to make sure you are planted in community, to make sure when the doubts rise up in your heart, because we all have doubts, we all have areas of disbelief, that you are truly taking them to people who can buttress the word of God to you, who will reiterate God's heart and God's passion for you, and that you're not becoming so clouded, that I'm not becoming so clouded by the voices that are contrary to the scripture. You know, Hebrews 3 speaks about not being hardened by the deceitfulness of sin, that sin is deceptive. And in my honest opinion, I believe that Joshua's heart became hardened by the deceitfulness of sin due to reading the critics, reading the people that perhaps didn't even have the seed of Christ in them, perhaps reading the voices of people or listening to the voices of people who thought that if I follow this manual that I'm going to get married and my life is going to be like X, Y, Z. It's not a formula. And I think that his heart became hardened. This is just my speculation by reading and watching and hearing these reviews about him that I think were undue. I think we had a lot of Christians in the 90s that um, were expecting this formula to work for them. And it just didn't because God doesn't work on formulas like that. So my heart is very, very hardened. But I just want to leave us with a few things just because he himself has said that he, you know, would put the book down and you know there's no need to read it that doesn't mean that this book isn't still inspired by the holy spirit but my encouragement to you as you read it is to really read it sober-mindedly the same way you'd read any book on your bookshelf our job is not to just take anything as gospel truth if it's not the bible if it's not the 66 canonized books of the bible then you know we can't just take it you know we can't just take it and act as though it's the the book that comes after revelation because it doesn't for us to be sober minded um, in all things. And just to add, just in regards to dating culture and courtship culture, um, for myself, I never really took this to be, you know, don't go out on dates or don't speak to a guy that seems interesting or show, is showing interest. Um, that's not actually what I took from the book. So when I was hearing some people that took, that God, that, that Joshua Harris was saying um, that, you know, it's only courtship and courtship must lead to marriage. I was very, very confused because that's not what I took from it. I took that we shouldn't be so careless in how we date. I took that we shouldn't be so, um, yeah, careless. Just, just, you know, I date whoever I want to date, you know, and without goal or without vision, without ambition. But I took that everything needs to be done for the glory of God. And ultimately I realized as someone who wanted to get married in the future, that these were boundaries that would help. Um, there's a line in here, I probably can't find it now, but I highlighted it and he said that a successful courtship doesn't have to end in marriage. That there are times where you might go through the process of courting someone um, and you're really trying to figure out if this person is someone that you can marry, should marry, is God's will for you. And that's okay that if you enter that courtship and it doesn't happen to be that way, 
that you can say, well, I can leave this thing knowing that I've been honourable, knowing that I've maintained boundaries. Another key thing that I got from this is that a healthy courtship needs to grow in friendship, fellowship and romance. To not start all the way up here, but to really allow the courtship to grow um, and allow the romance to grow and the friendship to grow. Um, I can't sing the praises of these books enough, but my only thing is, if you come to something with tinted glasses, you will see through those tinted glasses. If I'm reading this through a lens of red, everything I read will be red. And I think that that was one of the biggest perils of the purity movement is that it made people feel as though I deserve marriage. I deserve a great sex life. I deserve X, Y, Z and made the women and the men not know how to interact with one another in a platonic way. Um, and so, yeah, I wanted to share some of my thoughts on all of this. The biggest one for me is to really watch how I stand Um to just make sure that I'm consistently aligning myself with the truth of God's word and not with the truth of my opinion, um, not with the way that I feel about something or my thoughts about something, but really what does God say about it and consistently moving closer and closer to that. My prayer ultimately for Uncle Joshua Harris, I call him uncle because honestly his book Humble Orthodoxy, Sex is Not the Problem, I'm looking over there because my bookshelf is over there, Sex is Not the Problem, Lust is, these are books that have been God-breathed, um, that the Spirit of God is just really upon. And my prayer is for him, ultimately, is that he, uh, that God really just woos him and brings him back and pulls him closer and that he finds the beauty in Christ Jesus that he once knew of. And my prayer is that, although it seems like a falling away, that it won't be one, that his heart will become just refreshed and he will yearn after Christ and yearn after righteousness again and also for his family as well and and yeah that the effects of this will be limited the, the detriments of this will be limited but ultimately that God will use his story for his glory for God's glory ultimately in all of it I really do thank God for Joshua Harris who at the age of 21 surrendered and said I'm going to write this book to show people more about Jesus and who subsequently in previous and years after that spent years preaching and teaching the true and authentic gospel of Jesus Christ. This book speaks so much about the cross of Calvary and how we do not deserve um, the sacrifice that Jesus Christ did. And so, yeah, my prayer is that we as Christians as well do not lose faith in God, but that we continue to press on in holiness and in righteousness to the things that Oh, that God delights in. Purity is so much more than not having sex. Purity is so much more than the avoidance of evil. It's the pursuit of good. And I thank God um, that when we follow his plan and his way, his way is always much more glorious, so much more glorious than ours. But God doesn't guarantee or promise that some of the things that we think he does. So yeah, that's it really. Um, I'm going to just end it there. If there's anything else that I feel led to say, I will record another video on it. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. But let's be sober. Let's be sober minded as we read books like this and any other book for that matter. Um, but yeah, God bless you guys. Take care.